We had fun talking about the best of the best maps in the Battlefield series, but this is YouTube, and negativity sells. So it's time to put our cynical, angry YouTuber hats back on and talk about the worst maps in the entirety of the Battlefield franchise. First off, it's really indisputable for me that Battlefield 2042 has by far the worst base maps of the entire series, and to avoid this list just being all 2042, I am choosing to exclude its maps from consideration. Because again, if I didn't, this list would entirely be 2042, and that's just not as interesting as looking at the rest of the series. As always, if you enjoy the video, consider subscribing as less than 1% of you are subscribed. So let's try to fix that and keep that amazing growth going. Let's get started. Number 5, Siege of Shanghai. That's right, I'm coming out of the gates with a scorching hot take, but hear me out. That is, if you're still watching and already typing a hate and rage-filled comment. This entry does have an asterisk next to it because I'm talking Siege of Shanghai very specifically here. Pre-Levolution Siege is one of my favorite maps in Battlefield 4 and top tier. However, unfortunately, as incredibly cool and iconic as the Levolution of the Skyscraper Falling is, it dumps this map to bottom tier for me instantly. The loss of the skyscraper as a major central set piece for this map completely ruins the flow and dynamic gameplay I enjoy so much. The skyscraper isn't just an epic area to fight on and underneath and around, it serves an extremely vital function in allowing teams to base jump onto other roofs and the enemy's points. While I know dislike for rooftop campers is pretty strong with this map, I love how vertical and urban the gameplay can be. Controlling the skyscraper provides a huge advantage for our team and as a result, firefights for it can get very heated and intense. Also as a result, it means people take this thing down as quickly as they can, ruining these fun and intense moments. The wreckage of it after it falls is just not nearly as interesting to me and makes the central point of this map an ugly and boring area to fight in. As much as I enjoy watching this evolution, I'm always disappointed when it happens early in a round. Number 4, The Block. Visceral Games had an interesting idea for a Battlefield Hardline map. They sat down and said, what if we took the absolute meat grinder of Metro, made it even smaller and worse, and thus The Block was born. The Block is about the size of Battlefield 3's close quarter maps with none of the charm or care put into them and way too many players. I think I've played one round of this map that didn't turn into a spawn camping nightmare. With extremely limited options to flank or move around, this map is an absolute slog to play and between having one or two enjoyable flanks, just doesn't feel fun and is antithetical to pretty much everything I love about the Battlefield series. I tolerate the meat grinder maps because I generally enjoy them enough to find some fun, but the block just ain't it. It doesn't help that I only played Hardline extremely late in its life cycle, and the only players left are pretty hardcore knowing every sightline and angle to headshot poor little noob me. I actually like the idea of a map based around a SWAT raid of a single apartment complex or block, I just think it was pulled off in the most bland and frustrating way possible here. Number 3, Caporetto. It pains me to have a Battlefield 1 map on here, but there's some pretty bad ones. Of those, Caparetto stands out to me for as much as it missed its potential as for how badly it feels to play. Released in the same DLC that brought us the visually stunning and intense Passchendaele, Caparetto is just not nearly as appealing to me in both aspects. While I like the idea of the low sunset mixed with the fiery landscape, it just kind of washes everything out and the design doesn't look like it had nearly the care and thought put into it as the other Apocalypse maps. It almost looks like a random assortment of assets they had placed haphazardly into a random place play area. Compared to the brilliance of Passchendaele, this falls really short for me where its only saving grace is the Livens Projector Artillery, which you can use. But gameplay wise, it feels like a slog with lots of wasted space with little to no cover for infantry, and somehow I feel like I'm always running uphill no matter where I am. But worst of all is the unfortunate lack of balance in this map, as the Italian forces are at a significant disadvantage. Overall, a disappointing addition to Battlefield 1's lineup. Number 2, El Alamin. Empty, boring, lifeless. El Alamin takes the cake for the worst aged map in the entire series. I remember being blown away by the sheer scale and size of this map back in Battlefield 1942 with its variety of vehicles and areas to attack. Fast forward to 2023 and it's easy to recognize just how empty, flat, and devoid of any fun this map actually is. DICE decided to highlight this emptiness by bringing El Alamin into Battlefield Portal, where it plays just as poorly now if not worse. 
I guess they were playing to their strengths of the map design elements from Battlefield 2042 with empty and boring and lifeless play areas. So unfortunately, while I think it could be considered a fan favorite of Battlefield 1942, I think they chose it solely due to how easy it was for Ripple Effect to make an empty desert filled with nothing for Portal, as they scrambled to shove that mode out the door for the launch of 2042. Do you want to fight in a flat, barren landscape of a desert, or featureless, uninteresting mountain ranges? With El Alamein, the choice is yours. Just work on your cardio if you aren't in a vehicle because you're one quick marathon away from the next closest point. Sometimes things are just better left in our rose-tinted memories. Before we move on to number one, we have a few honorable mentions here. Fjell, or Fell. Nothing new here, planes and pilots ruin everything in Battlefield, yeah, I said it. Fjell is visually very striking and it's pretty cool when a blizzard rolls in, but what could have been an incredible infantry focused experience in Battlefield 5 is completely ruined by unending farming bombing runs of buzzing planes. Kursk. Look at this map. I legitimately think they just forgot to design the rest of it. Heavy Metal. Bad Company 2 had some extremely fun maps, but Heavy Metal really wasn't one of those for me. This map did provide some good moments for one thing and one thing only, slug shotgun sniping, but other than frustrating bush wookies with a shotgun from 400 meters away, this map was painful to play when outside a vehicle. While I can enjoy tank battles, Bad Company 2 was always an infantry focused experience for me, so a massive and empty map that promoted vehicle gameplay definitely wasn't my favorite. Number one, wait, this can't be right, I exclude it from this Our class. That's right, this map is so terrible that it transcends my own criteria for this video. It couldn't be any other way. Even excluding 2042, I couldn't bring myself to put any map in the series above, or I guess below, this absolute embarrassment of map design. Hourglass is by far the worst battlefield map ever made, and its only competition is all the other base maps from 2042. Nothing. Not even all the way back to Battlefield 1942 comes close to how unenjoyable this map is for me. Granted, it has one interesting area, the state Stadium, which is completely shoved to the side and half buried under sand and isn't even available for last gen console players but other than that this map is a massive disappointment. I really would love to know what they were thinking when they designed this map and the point placement. The trailer made it look insanely epic and little did we know just how poorly it would actually feel to play. But I guess that's just kind of true for the entire game. I understand why DICE chose to do Hourglass last for their so called reworks of the base game maps because this needs so much work they almost might as well start over. Like they certainly could shift the stadium closer, but that does nothing for the uninteresting and frustrating roof and ground level combat in the fringes of the city. The map and play area needs to be shifted entirely inwards to be an actual urban city map, with more than just massive skyscrapers but actual urban environments and buildings to have firefights on with destruction within. Hourglass is almost like a prototype or a concept of a map they built for testing purposes and forgot to go back and finish. While I can appreciate a lot of what they tried here with different skyscrapers and open areas for vehicles, it just did not work out at all. Massive oversights in both conquest and breakthrough in design make this app an exercise in frustration to play. I've complained about the weaknesses of the base maps in Battlefield 4 in previous videos, but those are a masterclass in map design compared to the travesties that are Battlefield 2042. The reworks to me are laughably bad and the bare minimum of finishing key art and assets required to actually have complete and functional maps. Among the worst of the worst, however, Hourglass stands alone. That's it for my list. Let me know in the comments how wrong I am and how much you hate me, and your picks for the worst Battlefield maps ever. Thanks for watching, until next time.